if you guys own a Mazda BT-50 or a Ford Ranger, listen up, this could happen to you. G'day guys. So, I wish somebody told me when I bought this car that I was probably going to run into this issue at some stage. So pretty much what happened, I was on the way up to Denham with a friend, we were going up there for a week. So uh, we've got a split in our uh, intercooler pipes, that's pretty awesome. Mate, could you have planned it any better? Oh, I don't think I could have, eh? Like, look how big she is. Yeah. And uh, we started running into some mechanical issues, so we pretty much had three symptoms. So the first symptom, which was really obvious, is um, when we were taking off, accelerating, or going 100 and accelerating, the back of the car was just, there was so much smoke there, like, there was more smoke than a steam train kind of thing, like, it was pretty bad. Um, the second symptom was she was running a little bit hot. So normally on the open road, she sits on about 92 degrees. While she was kind of running around 100, which was pretty unusual. And then the third symptom, which was really obvious and pretty hard not to notice, the car was going into limp mode. So it was all caused by this stupid little crack. So how were we able to diagnose the problem? Well, pretty much thanks to this little device here. This is an engine data scanner. And if you have a modern diesel that's got a full on computer system, these are definitely a great investment, especially seeing as they're only around $100. And as far as installing them, it's literally plug and play, no tools required, super easy. So thanks to that, we were able to scan and see what the fault code was that was causing the car to go into limp mode. And as it turned out, when we looked it up, the code was P00BD. And when you look that up in your repair manual, these are awesome to have if you're out on the road. It pretty much said airflow sensor volume signal out of range. So that means that the mass airflow sensor was virtually not working as it should or something was wrong in the system. So thanks to that, we were able to Google that issue. And then on the forums, everybody was going like, it's probably an intercooler pipe. Sure enough, we started up the car. I run my hand along the hose and I could feel the air coming out. And then when the car was turned off, you could actually hear it still gushing out after the motor had been turned off because there was still pressure in the line. So that was super handy, just being able to virtually look up the code in the book, search it on the web, find out what the issue is. And when we were searching on the web, it looks like a lot of people in the forums have had this exact problem. So I'm not sure if Ford and Mazda have fixed this issue with the new pipes that they're putting out on these cars, or whether the issue still exists, but it's just something to keep in mind. So we were out on the road. How did we temporarily fix it? Well, we pretty much used four hose clamps and this silicon tape. It's called a SOS silicon tape and that held up really, really well for the 1500 kilometers to finish the trip and get back home. Today I'm installing the uh, replacement pipe. That pretty much kept me going, that temporary fix until uh, this one came in the mail. So this one's from, try and get it in focus there, Plasma Man, so it's a silicon pipe. It should be uh, considerably stronger than the other one because pretty much I had the option of replacing it with the same pipe and having the possibility of it happening all over again or I could either go for a metal option or go for silicon so I'm going to give the silicon a try in the hope that this should pretty much solve the problem forever hopefully fingers crossed so let's get this installed it'd be so nice if repairing cars was always this easy two hose clamps put the new part in two hose clamps done Come on, work with me, Clamp, work with me. Like a glove. So maybe Mazda and Ford have improved the design since because this is a 2012, so it is a little bit older. But even so, you could always consider replacing this pipe with a silicon one if you're worried about it. Otherwise, you know what? Chuck some hose clamps in your car when you're going on big trips, just in case, along with some silicon tape. And even if you don't use this for this hose, you might need it for a different hose, you never know. Never hurts to have it because there's nothing worse than being stuck in the middle of nowhere. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in another video, eh? I tell you what though, it kind of looks like a try-hard racing car now that it's got silicon hoses in it. Who does that? <laughs>